we see things differently. Instead of the glass being half empty, it's what? It's half full. That's a new perception. Now here's a beautiful young lady. And I would like for you to see this new perception. Here she is. She's smiling and she's happy. But, uh, you know, if we just turn her a little bit, I'm not sure what she looks like now, but let's turn her a little bit more. <laughs> see, what's your perception now? You see, the first picture was a picture of my wife before we got married. <laughs> and that's all I'm going to say. <laughs> this must be my mother-in-law. <laughs> Not really. My mother-in-law is deceased, but she was a wonderful woman. And anyway, here's the two of them together. You see, one is just upside down from the other one. Our perception is that the glass is half full. It's no longer half empty. And so we, think, we see things differently. And so we read the Bible and we find out that the first will be last and the last will be first. That's a new perception, isn't it? I was taught just by life. You know, it's a me-first society. And uh, recent events in the, in the uh, economic world have shown that, you know. It's, it's uh, how much money can I make? And th then the Bible tells us if you lose your life, you'll gain it. And if you save your life, you'll lose it. That's odd. It's a new perception. And then the Bible says that the weak are strong. You know, that we're all weak, but when we have Christ, we're strong. And then it says that the poor are rich because somehow or another, the poor can sense their need perhaps a little more than what rich people can sense. And that's a positive thing if you happen to be poor. You actually see your need. It's uncomfortable to not know where you're going to sleep or where your next meal's coming from. But you are totally dependent upon God in those circumstances. The Bible says, the world hates you, but I love you. That's certainly good news. The Bible says you're saved by faith, not by works. That's good news. Now, I want to get back to Nick at night. The Bible says not only do we want to do God's will instead of ours when we're born again, but we have these new priorities. I'd like to show you an example from Scripture of someone who actually had new priorities. Joseph of Arimathea asked Pilate for permission to take down Jesus' body. And when Pilate gave permission, Joseph came and he took the body away. With him came Nicodemus, the man who had come to Jesus at night. In John chapter 3, we have that story about Nicodemus. He's mentioned just one other time in Scripture. And then here in John 19, we find at the end of the life of, of Jesus, he comes back and he's taking down the body of Jesus with Joseph of Arimathea. So you see... Here's the good news. There was Nick at night. But because Nick at night was born again and he experienced new birth, he's not Nick at night any longer. He's now Nick at daytime. He, he came out and he showed his true colors. He let people know that he was born again. And the good news that I have for you today is that if it happened to Nick, it can happen to you. Isn't that good news? Let us pray. Oh God, we're so caught up with doing things our way that we often forget that it's really not all about us. It's all about you. We thank you, Lord, for hearing our prayer 
and ask for your blessing in Jesus' name. Amen. the Lord Jesus Christ be with you now and forever, and may the good news bring joy to your life. Amen. Bye.